so this is part of a series of small paintings that I want to do. Uh, I know a lot of people like my seascapes, but they're quite big. Not everybody can afford them, which I appreciate. Um, so I just wanted to do a series of paintings that were a little smaller. So this one is uh, a sea at Galston. So I've blocked it in already, and now I'm coming back in with a second layer. Now from the reference that I've got here, it's a photograph I took down on Galston Beach, which I will show you here. There's kind of a, a smoky haze at the bottom of the horizon, which I would like to include. So I'm using ultramarine, some white, and then I'm going to put the tiniest bit of chronacridone magenta. So I end up with this sort of smoky, slightly warm blue-grey. So just blending this through. The paint I'm using is an Atelier Interactive Acrylic, which means it's an open acrylic and stays wet a little bit longer and is re-wettable. So what I'm doing here is just using a damp brush just to do a bit of blending. Just all about layering and blending and so I've got my sky in and I'm going to start putting a layer in for the sea. It's a very similar sky colour to the lower part of the sky. And there's browns and stuff in it, so I'm going to start off with a blue layer and then I'm going to add to it. Bringing it all the way across. I've got the land there, so I'm just going to start off. This gets a bit brighter blue as we come forward. It's just the reflection of the sky. Then I will add the browns into it in a minute. There we go. A couple of little lumps off my palette, that's all. This lighter patch here. Oops. So just gradually coming forward. Now whilst I've got the 
blue. This kind of fades out to brown, but there's more blue here. So I need to make up this brownie colour and it's, it's this sand showing through and you can just see some of the sand in amongst the um, water. sand colours into the sea. I got a little bit sidetracked with putting another layer onto the sky whilst I had the blue on my palette and on my brush. So I finally get to come back into this and start working into the shading and the blending in my water. So I come back in and I just have a fiddle, I can't help myself. So I've got the blue on my brush and I'm having that, that little fiddle with the blue and then I'm going to pick up some other colours so it'll be a bit of yellow ochre, a bit of the red gold. Um, a few other bits of muck off my palette, no doubt. And I'm starting to put that in on the edge of the wave. And I'm flicking it up into the water. So flicking it back up across the blue and I'll do a little bit of blending in a minute. There's lots of light little strokes. A little bit of grey going in there as well. Toning grey yellow shade, I'm using a little bit of in there. And just blending it back into that previous wave. So now I've got that brown sand colour underneath, I'm coming back in with some more of the blue and I'm blending it across so it looks as if the water, hopefully it looks as if the water is over the sand. And I'm blending the two together. This is about all creating my surface on which I'll put my froth and fluff later. But it's getting that, that underneath layer blended and working together. As before, I'm using quite light strokes. I want these to, to mix, but not be thoroughly mixed. So there's a little bit of both showing. And as with all of it, it's just a bit of playing.
I've got the same colour as I used in the C, which is raw umber, a bit of red gold, and some neutral tint yellow shade. I'm adding a little bit of um, yellow ochre to it as well. I'm just using this combo. I'm going to up the red gold. Just building this up. I really should have fixed my board to the easel. Stop it moving around. There's going to be a bit of blue in it up here as well, but I'm just getting this covering of this colour and then I shall waft the blue gently over it. Need to let that dry back a bit. So here I'm adding a little bit of a highlight onto the ripples. I've put a bit of shadow in and then this is creating the light on the top. It's giving me a, a wave that's just beginning to come in at the back. I'll add some more detail to it later but this is just the, the first stage of, of building this up um, and just adding some light to it really, just a little bit of that sunlight hitting it. Just skimming across the surface of the sea, just trying to get some of the, that ripple, that, that sort of movement in the water. It was a very calm day, but uh, there's, still, there's still movement in the water. As we always say, it's light against dark and dark against light, so I've got those ripples going across the dark brown layer and then I'm, I'm highlighting above it.
Here I'm starting to add some of that little foam and froth that you get on the water. So it's just begin being the beginning to bring it all in um, so we get that, that texture and that lace work really but at this distance it's not very detailed so it's just putting a little hint of this in. When you're painting with white acrylic it does tend to sort of sink in a little bit which is good because I want this to be not quite bright white. I'll save that for uh, further in as I come forward. You do sometimes need to put a second layer on which you'll see later. Starting to build along the edge of the wave. Just defining where it's going to be. All of this is, is just a process, building up all of these layers of colour and shadow and light. I'm just working carefully because what I don't want to do is cover over too much of those layers underneath. So it's going to be quite a lot of it covered, but I need to make sure I leave some little gaps for some of those blends that I did earlier to show through. Just looking at some very fine detail. Just getting that little bit of froth and fluff.
just bringing that lace work further along the beach and coming to my larger wave now, so just adding a bit of detail in there. So now I'm extending the lace work over the top of the wave and by giving it that little curl at the edge it gives a th three dimensional feel to the wave itself so it's giving me shaping um, of the surface of the water where it just starts to roll over. I'm using quite a small little flat brush here and every now and then you just need to clean it off and it gets a bit clumpy with paint so you just need to give it a wash, give it a wipe and then start again just so that you can keep these really sort of small flat marks. This has come from years of studying and observing and just seeing how these layers of lace work sit on the sea and how they break up. And you can see all that blending still showing through underneath so you've got that bit where it goes from the blue to that sort of sandy brown colour. Just curling over that edge again to give it some shape. This is my favourite bit doing all the lace work. Now in the theme of light against dark and dark against light I'm putting in some shadow colour. So this is a mixture of my ultramarine and my umber. And I'm just running it along the edge of the wave just underneath uh, where the wave has broken and it's sitting on top of the next layer. And it just creates that sort of depth to it, that extra depth. And then I'm coming along with a damp brush and I'm brushing most of it away so it just becomes a suggestion of this shadow. It's not too thick and clumpy then. And I pull that shadow colour up into the wave as well to give some shading and shaping to that foam. Okay, let's just keep building these layers. And now I've put that in, I've cleaned my brush and I'm just using a damp brush to soften it and push it around a little bit. Putting some extra brighter whites on top as well to contrast.
just coming back onto my shadows. And it's a broken mark, it's not a solid line underneath there, it's a little bit broken, a little bit disjointed, just to make it feel a little more natural. And then again, just washing it away. beginning to come together now, this painting. I'm starting to build the layers in the uh, pier. This is actually the pier and across the harbour. Um, I'm going to build these darks, lights, build them up, layer them and then add the buildings that are sat on top there now that my sky has dried back pretty much. It's pretty much dry now. It's just suggestions of lights and darks really and I'll, I'll build a few more in but uh, it's not putting too much detail in in the distance. I'm just taking my time to build the layers again. That's all painting is really, it's just, it's just putting different colours down, lights and darks just letting it slowly build up. And I want this to be quite neat and quite accurate, but I don't want it to be too harsh and too straight. So it's, um, I'm putting it in and then wiggling around a little bit to soften it. Again, like I did on, on the edge of the wave, I'm just softening this base. I don't want it to be too hard a line, so I'm just softening that out a little bit. Making it a little bit less stark. I've put a darker layer in and I'm just touching down a lighter brush colour. It's mostly the red gold with a bit of yellow ochre in there and this is a, a metal um, barrier and it's gone a little bit rusty so it's just sort of touching this rust colour on there. a little shadow across the top.
So I've added some of the buildings in here and it's it's really just blocking in the shapes making suggestions of these buildings because this is all in the distance uh, so it's just suggestive digestive bu buildings really just sort of hinting at them Again, just breaking up some of those edges so it's not too stark, not too obvious. Blocks, boxes, and a few roofs really, and that's about all the buildings are in the distance. They're just little boxes and squares with a bit of light on one side and a little bit of shadow on the other. And then put a roof on and a window and you're done. Except it's not quite that simple, is it? You need to have enough detail in for something to be recognisable. But I, again, I don't want to, I'm trying not to put too much detail in. A few towers and chimneys. windows it takes a little bit of focus and concentration is just to make the right shapes It's a nice sunny day, so we've got lots of brights, lots of contrasts, lots of shadows. Make sure I've got the lights in the right place and just keep referring back to my um, photograph now. So really all the building is is a box with a roof on it. That building is looking at me now.
So here we have the finished painting, Alston Water's Edge. Thank you for joining me.